The story of Bengali migrants in Singapore starts in the 19th century, when the island was effectively ruled from Calcutta, which was then the center of political economic activities and the administrative capital of the British Empire. Bengalis acquired a distinct place in the Indian migratory experiences in Singapore and Southeast Asia. They neither fit in the larger labor history discourse of Indian migration, nor belong to the lesser in number but prominently visible merchant communities. Bengalis have been facilitated by British administrative links between Bengal slash India and Malaya and uh, they migrated as small yet important group of professionals who significantly contributed to running of the colonial missionary. The imagination of a Bengali or Bengali in Singapore and Malaya was that of almost anyone from North India including the Punjabis, the Hindustanis who were actually people from Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, uh, the present states in India, and Bengalis from present West Bengal and Bangladesh. Most likely it was the common port of embarkation of Calcutta in Bengal and administrative recruits from the Bengal regiment, coupled with the lack of understanding of the regional diversities of India and Southeast Asia, that created this mistaken identity of a Bengali in Singapore and Malayan region. There are several examples of such misconceptions when we go through the oral history recordings and even when we talk to the older group of migrants. This certainly led to difficulties in ascertaining the actual number of Bengalis in the earlier census record. The Bengali migrants stood out, however, in the professions they followed. They had readily taken up English education and served in the government mostly as doctors, lawyers, teachers, and other positions in the administration. Starting off in Malaya, towns like Seremban and so on, they worked in the um, government service, uh, they worked in, um, uh, in organizations like the postal service, telecommunication service, water authorities. Uh, they were um, essentially helping the colonial masters with uh, the running of the um, country in some way or the other. Of course you had um, some well-known doctors, um, lawyers, um, some uh, fairly senior civil servants and so on. But by and large uh, they were in the service. Dolly Davenport, a prominent member of the community herself, recalls some names. One was by my father-in-law, Dr. A.C. Sinha, who started actually the Bengali Association on 10th of September 1956. And then there was Dr. Guho, who was a lawyer. Uh, Sorry, doctor, yeah, Dr. Go. Then Dr. Mitra and B.K. Sen. These are very prominent families uh, we had. My father-in-law was an um, uh, obstetrician gynae, and his whole family were doctors. And they have been living, and he was, uh, you know, um, a Rotary Club member, and then he did a lot of charity work. He never charged uh, any fees from Bengali, so all the patients came from uh, Malaysia also to see him. Interestingly, this trajectory of occupational trend has continued to the present times in the Bengali community. And uh, when we talk about the professionals, we uh, put it in the context of how they're playing a very significant role in the development of the economy. Singapore opened up its borders to foreign talent um, in a big way around the mid-90s. There was a realization that Singapore needed uh, expertise to uh, advance its economy in areas such as technology, banking, finance, and also advanced manufacturing. And the other opportunity that Singapore had was that it was a, ideally suited to have Asia-Pacific offices of the large global and regional companies. So there was a big push to getting talent, um, and I think uh, Bengalis uh, were ideally suited for this opportunity, um, as indeed were a lot of other Indian communities, because uh, so by that time, we had the IITs and the IIMs, uh, lots of very well-educated um, uh, professionals, and many of them had uh, experience working for leading MNCs around the world. So we had this uh, big influx of uh, Bengali professionals, and they are very well represented across the um, Singapore economy and workforce. Many of them are with the um, global banks, Others are with professional service firms, consultancies, 
of, of course the academia, some uh, are in technology and generally Bengalis uh, are not business owners and traders, uh, they, they tend to work uh, in uh, companies but I'm really heartened but what I, with what I see now in the tech space because um, both in fintech and technology startups we have uh, some young Bengali entrepreneurs uh, and uh, including women who have started uh, companies which have really got traction here and uh, are well known. Women have in fact played a stellar role in the narrative of the Bengali diaspora. My mother-in-law was the secretary of Subhash Chandra Bose actually. So she's traveled with him when my husband was a little boy. She left him uh, with the helpers and then she traveled with him all over. Dolly's story is itself an interesting one as she represents the phenomenon of what is known as the Bengali bridal diaspora. Anthropologists have often argued the trajectory of Bengali bridal diaspora from the point of view of cross-cultural marriages and various uh, push and pull factors within India. In this context, however, we are talking about the long history of Bengali women moving out along with their male counterparts to build families and homes outside their original homeland in different geographies. Most of these marriages in the diaspora uh, happened from within the Bengali community. Thus, the cultural threads, the language skills, the culinary efficiency have been easily preserved and sustained uh, through the Bengali brides or the women folk in a diasporic setting. We have seen many such examples within the Bengali community, both in the past and the present. I came in 1966 to Singapore and uh, I was, I came as a new bride and um, I still remember what a commotion in, because my father-in-law and or my parents-in-law rather, they were very prominent people here. So everybody went to Pai Labor Airport to receive me those days, you know. And there was some, all the rituals of wedding rituals also at the Pai Labor because my mother-in-law made sure that all the Bengalis and other people, we had other friends, they do all the rituals. So I had to do the whole rituals there at the airport. In the absence of any specific physical institution and rigid traditional practices, the responsibility of carrying forward the cultural legacy actually fell on these Bengali brides, both within the family as well as the community. Dolly Davenport exemplifies this pattern as a person who took the initiative of setting up the Tagore Society in Singapore. I was in India and then I met this Chief Minister of uh, Bengal and then Mr. Buddha Dev and he said, he asked me, uh, do you have a Tagore Society in Singapore? And I said, no, it was there in 1950s for some problem and they closed it down. So then he said, oh, what a shame. All over the world you have, you know, even South America has. So you should go back and do something. So I came back here and then I asked the Indian High Commission. And they said that, uh, yeah, why don't you start? So we did. So 2004, we were registered. Tagore was in fact one of the most important influences on the Bengali community in Singapore, as he was everywhere else in the world. Tagore came here, as you know, 19, he came three times. Singapore, 1916, 1924, but his most prominent visit was 1927. You know, he wanted to bring cross-culture of India and Asia, he wanted to do. And he was, you know, one Mr. Uh, you know, he was, when he was given, Mr. Malal Namazi was here. Mr. Namal, Malal Namazi, he uh, celebrated his visit to Singapore in his house and there were a few hundred people were there to welcome him. And he gave a speech also. He gave a speech in Victoria Theatre also. Samit Goshal, who belongs to the Tagore family and has been very active in the Bengali cultural scene in Singapore, tells us how the Bengali love for Tagore manifests itself even today in Singapore. Rubindra Jayanti, that means Tagore's birth, uh, he was born 8th of May in May. So around that time, uh, there are uh, specific programs sometimes, even if it is not done on a stage, I found people are celebrating at their home. So that's quite interesting. I mean, they, 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 they uh, put the picture, put flowers below Tagore's uh, 
in, in, in front of the photograph and then the scene. And then the, nowadays social media, you can see all those videos coming up. Yet another Bengali name closely associated with the story of Singapore is that of Subhash Chandra Bose. Many Singaporeans are unaware of the significant role of Singapore in the anti-British struggle in India. That was largely possible due to the firebrand political activist and nationalist Subhash Chandra Bose, a Bengali who made Singapore the base of his operations against the British. It may be argued that his violent military struggle complemented the non-violence protest that uh, Gandhi was leading as a mainstream political protest in India. He proclaimed the provisional government of Azad Hind or independent India in 1943. He built up a strong Indian National Army in 1942 and also established the women's wing of the army, the Rani of Jhansi Regiment, the extraordinary contribution uh, of Bose in the anti-British struggle of India. That happened in 1943 and all this from his headquarters in Singapore. Imagination of Bose in Singapore remains a very sensitive topic of discussion since he's often seen as the Japanese collaborator. While this is true in a certain sense, it also should be acknowledged that he had his distinct pattern of thought and ideologies. The greatest contribution of Bose in Singapore and the Malayan Peninsula is the social awakening and political activism that he generated and motivated amongst thousands to rise up against colonial oppression. This was the most remarkable experience for many plantation workers who perhaps had never been to India in their lifetime, but who were encouraged by, by his extraordinary appeal and oratory skills with a sense of self-identity and liberation. The legacy of Bose and Tagore still resonates within the Bengali community today in their stories and memories their songs and dances. Adda she to adda noy, noy ko shudhui gultani, mojli she ei jombe ashur, me jachta hok shultani. Ami banglae gan gai, ami banglae gan gai. Ma kar parabe, madna chora dham sabha jai se. Wakar dinne bihan kalle kalle la dirthar. Dak hol de ranga muri khaye thotter ki bahar. Wakar parobe madna sora dam sabha jai se. Samit Goshal recalls the cultural activities of the Bengali community from when he first came to Singapore. We used to basically perform based on Tagore's Rabindranath Tagore's works, Kaji Nazrul Islam and the old uh, Bengali songs of the 50s because most of the people here were either staying since that time or second or third generation Bengalis. Uh, so they were enjoying the golden era of music in Bengal. So that's what it was. We had dance dramas, of Tagore's dance dramas. And it was entirely local without bringing people from outside. The big kind of fillip in the Bengali Association came with the new Bengalis coming in, bringing with them uh, their cultural awareness, their love for religion, for, uh, for uh, the cultural aspects of, uh, of Bengal, um, Duga, as well as Durga Pujo, Saraswati Pujo. These started beginning, to, we started celebrating those. And they were a great um, um, uh, force in reviving uh, the cultural aspects of Bengal uh, here in uh, Singapore. Uh, from about the um, 80s and 90s. Culturally vibrant is an expression that comes readily to mind when describing my community. We're given plenty of opportunities to enjoy the arts throughout the year through the efforts of the Bengali Association and its talented members, but we also celebrate important religious festivals like Durga Puja, which marks the victory of the goddess Durga over the buffalo demon Mohishashur, symbolizing the triumph of good over evil and the renewal of hope. It's a joyous occasion which creates the opportunity to bond with members within and beyond the community as visitors drop in to find out more about this wonderful festival which is so much a part of our enriching multicultural landscape in Singapore. The sense of cultural unity that is seen in the Durga Puja celebrations is, however, a reflection of the deeper sense of belonging that the community has always fostered in its members. 
a feeling that is nourished by their abiding love for their language and their amazing and unique cuisine. Food is in fact a cultural marker of great significance for the Bengali diaspora. In the Bengali food, there is influences of various parts of the world and they made it their own. That's the best part of it. So they did not reject anyone. They accepted every influences and made a Bengali cuisine. So it's very much uh, different in a way that this state, unlike other state of India, the food in Bengal is the only food which is served course by course. It graduates from bitter goat to bhaji and you know the roast and the fries, then to vegetables, then to chicken, then comes fish because fish is stronger. Then comes the seafood and then the mutton. It understands the diversity even of the taste but you know that what you can absorb and how it should go along and ending it with the sweet. The sense of identity and belonging fostered by food and music, language and art is something the community is also taking forward to the next generation. For our children, the community has been a gateway to cultural knowledge, helping them hone their fluency in the mother tongue and develop an interest in Bengali literature and music through opportunities to enjoy as well as to participate in cultural activities. It's been invaluable in giving third culture kids a deeper understanding of their roots and the cultural environment their parents grew up in. And of course, they've built up a big network of friends in the community as well, which is always a blessing. Does the lack of a physical institution affect the bonding and interactions within the community? I know there's always a little bit of a panic. All the Bengali Association committee members work furiously to identify um, a location for Durga Pujo and we are a little bit nomadic. Sometimes, you know, we started celebrating it in Kamala Club and then Kamala Club disappeared. We moved to the Indian Association, I think, uh, and then Khalsa Club and then, um, you know, we, uh, we now do it in uh, somewhere in, in Sarangun Road. The last couple of years we couldn't do it, except last year we actually did it in the Sindhi Association, which was, uh, again, a, a masterstroke by the um, Bengali Association Committee to identify a small place and uh, within the COVID constraints still hold Durga Pujo. Um, so I, I think somehow we manage. I mean, I think um, we find a way to, um, to have everything. And now, of course, we also have the Bengali classes, which are done in conjunction with the, the Bangladeshi Association. Um, and they are held in different schools. So I think uh, physical, um, not having a physical space is, uh, is something which we have been able to overcome. And I don't think we should uh, worry about it. In fact, there is nothing really to worry about as the Bengali community continues on its robust path here in Singapore, maintaining and celebrating and passing on to the next generation its traditions and legacies.